Hi, I'm Frankie, and in this video, we'll be creating a complete Azure Function solution. We'll be using a real-world use case that I use every single day. We'll go over what it is, how it works, and how you can build it. And at the end, we'll add it to our template Azure portfolio website. I want to apologize in advance for the sound on this video. There was some construction in the background during the time of recording, and I couldn't remove all the construction noise without also removing valuable parts of the demo. Now, all that said, let's dive right in. So here's the use case. In YouTube, in the description, there is time code that can be used to create chapters to the video, where you can go to specific places in the video and makes it easier for the viewer to see specific parts of the video. However, creating this time code can be a hassle because if you were to do it manually, you'd upload a video and then you'd watch the video and understand where all of the seconds are and then create this specific time code format. It's kind of a pain and it's a little bit easier when you have a tool like Premiere Pro where you can add markers in throughout the video to the specific places where you want to have these chapters. I then have the ability to come to file and export to export a markers file that then looks like this. And this is a pretty good start with the chapter titles and pretty close to the time code that I'm looking for. So it just needs to get manipulated a little bit. Now let's look at the architecture. So we already have our portfolio website at masonstart.com. And if you haven't created that, you can find a video on how to start doing that in the link in the description. We're going to add in the functionality to upload a file to a container in an Azure storage account. At the same time, right after we upload that file, we have an Azure function that is going to start pulling the output container in that Azure storage account, looking for the edited file that has been manipulated. But almost simultaneously, when that blob is uploaded, our time coder function will get triggered by that blob storage upload, and then it will output the manipulated file to the timecode output container. Our git download URL file will then pick that up and send that to masonstark.com where the user can then download the updated file. So that's the overall flow for this solution. Now let's build it and add in the functionality to masonstark.com for this portfolio project. Just before we get started, if you want to follow along with this demo, you're going to need a few things. Visual Studio Code is the editor that we're using to edit masonstark.com and create our Azure functions. You're going to need an Azure account to create your Azure storage account and your Azure function that we're going to be using for the portfolio project added to the masonstark.com website. You're going to need the Azure CLI to help with authentication for your Azure Function Core Tools CLI the Azure Function Core Tools CLI themselves, which will create our Azure functions, start them, publish them to Azure, and then also Node.js locally if you're creating JavaScript functions and following along exactly like the demo. Links to get started with each of these will be found in the description. Okay, to get started, I'm in a new resource group that I created. Now let's create our storage account. I'll come to the marketplace, type in storage account, I'll make sure I use the resource group I was just using. And I'll call this AIS Demo Funk Store. Keep it ECUS, be a standard storage account. Make this local and review and create. The deployment is complete. Let's go to the resource and we'll create our first two containers. Going to containers. I'll add a container and we'll call it input timecode files. And then we'll create output timecode files. This is where we'll upload input timecode files and then the output will be where the outputted blobs that have been manipulated will be. Next, let's jump to VS Code and create our Azure functions locally. In Visual Studio Code, let's create our function locally. Func function new. I'll select node. I'll select JavaScript. The local files needed for a function app that can house functions are now being installed locally into my demo functions folder. In just a moment, we'll choose the template for our first function and how it will get triggered. 
Now we'll select our Azure Blob Storage Trigger for our first function. We'll call it Demo AIS YouTube Time Coder. Now the function should have been created. Here it is. We have some standard template code right now. I'm going to go ahead and paste in the code that I've pre-created to actually create the conversion. All right, I've pasted this code in. Now a couple things we're going to want to keep in mind. We need a connection to our storage account that we created. So I'm going to create this connection in local settings.json by updating my Azure Web Job Storage and also creating a new connection with the demo AIS storage. We'll update this with our storage account access keys. Let's go into our access keys. This is where you can grab your connection string, hit show and then copy, paste it in, and we should be set to test this. Now the way we're going to test this is by running this locally and then uploading a file to our storage account to trigger our function. So let's test this. We'll run func start and we'll upload a file to our storage account which will trigger our local Azure function and it should manipulate the file with the predefined logic that we've already added and then output to the output container with the manipulated file. So this is running. Now let's go to our storage browser. We'll go to blob containers, input timecode, upload. I have a markers file that I outputted from Adobe Premiere already for a previous video. I'll upload this. Let's see if it was triggered. Looks like it was. Now let's check our output container. It looks like our output container has our outputted file. I can download this and take a look. And that worked and this is much easier to copy and paste into a YouTube description. Now let's add the functionality to add this to the Mason Stark website. Let's stop this and we're going to add another function. So I'll go control shift P, create function, we'll create an HTTP trigger. We'll call it get download URL and let's paste in the predefined code. Now for this we are using Azure Blob Storage's SDK so we are going to need to download that. So I'll make sure in my code npm install Azure Blob Storage SDK. Real quick, all this Azure function does is that if there is a file that exists with the name that was uploaded in its edited state in the output container, then a download URL will be generated for the front end to allow a user to download it. So let's get this started and test it out. We'll go to func start. We'll grab the local URL in the browser. Let's put this in. Blob name equals grab the name of the file that we uploaded without the edited part. And boom, there's our download URL. I can copy this, put this in another browser window and boom, my file is downloaded. Now that these two functions are working, let's create our Azure function and then publish these two functions to that Azure function. All right, back in my resource group in the Azure portal, let's create an Azure function. Type in function app in the marketplace, create, I'll make it consumption. I'll make sure I'm still using the same resource group. I'll call this AIS demo function app. Windows, Node, East US, Storage. Make sure to select the storage that we've been using. Review and create. We'll come to our Visual Studio Code editor. And now let's publish this. Func Azure Function App Publish the name of the function app. All right, our functions have been uploaded to the Azure Function app. Let's refresh and make sure that they're there, and they are. 
Next, let's add these to the Mason Stark website. I've opened up the Mason Stark website in my Visual Studio Code. Let's get this started and we can see it in its current state and then we'll start adding updates to add our timecode converter portfolio project. All right, this is what it looks like in its current state. We have our logic app form responder that we created previously. You can check out that video in the description. We're going to update this portfolio project too with information regarding our function app and the timecode converter. First, I have a file that I created that I'll add in here that will be used for our portfolio project icon. I created this in Canva. It represents the project because we output a markers.txt file from Premiere Pro. We make changes to it with an Azure function and ultimately use it then for a YouTube description. In the navigation, let's change project to YouTube time coder. In the project two component file, we're gonna add several changes. We'll add logic to upload the file and also logic to call our Azure function, which gets the download URL. In our UI, let's add the new image, update some of these details, YouTube timecode converter. We'll add in the details for the buttons to upload a file and convert it, and also a button to download the converted file. We're going to add just a few features, not all. So I'll remove this. We'll add in changes to the data itself, talking about this project. And we'll update our styling so that our buttons look okay. To upload to Azure Blob Storage, we'll need the SDK for Blob Storage. So npm install Azure Blob Storage. A couple more things we need to add in here is in order to upload to the Azure Blob Storage account, we need a shared access signature URL that allows the front end to temporarily upload to Azure Blob Storage. So let's create that now. We're gonna do that in the Azure portal. All right, in the Azure portal within our Azure storage account, let's go to our container. So we'll go to storage browser, blob containers. Once we're in our container list, these last three dots at the end, we'll hit generate SAS, which is a shared access signature. We'll use this shared access signature in order to upload to the input timecode files container. We'll change the permissions to be create and write, and then we'll generate this token. Note when this token expires is when this will no longer work. So if you want this to work for a longer period of time on your portfolio website, you'll need to make the shared access signature longer in terms of how long it lasts. I'll copy this blob shared access signature URL and add it here in my code. Next, I'll need to make sure I add my function URL for the download URL function. Let's grab that from the function now. And in under code and test, I'll get function URL. I'll select get function URL. And because I'm using anonymous as the off level, I can use any of these. And I'll add this in. Now this is our website up and running with the changes we made. And we might think, hey, we have everything all set up, but there is one thing else we need to change. If I go to choose a file, add it, and then convert it, I get console errors about not being able to fetch. This is because cores is not enabled, which is cross-origin resource sharing. To let this work, let's update our core settings in both our Azure function and our Azure storage account. In our Azure storage account, we'll come to our settings, we'll go to resource sharing cores, we'll add the allowed origin, select the methods that should be used, Save this, and in the function app, let's come to the API cores, and we'll allow for localhost. I had to remove that slash at the end. Let's make sure that slash is not here also. It needs to be exact without the slash on the end. And now let's give this another try. Add a file, convert it, and I'm able to download my converted file. Let's open this up and make sure it looks the way it's supposed to. And it does. 
To finalize these changes, let's commit the changes, open a new pull request, and merge it into our master branch. So I'll git add the changes that were made to this branch. And I'll push the changes to this branch. On GitHub, I see this notification that I just pushed this branch. And so I can compare it and make a pull request. I'll create a new pull request. Looking at the changed files in our pull request, let's merge it in. To make sure this works, let's add Mason Stark to the cores and we'll remove our local host. Save this. Make sure you have no slashes at the end of the URL. All right, we've made all our changes. Now let's refresh this and boom, we have our new changes for our YouTube timecode converter portfolio project. We should now be able to give this a try, choose a file. Once my file is selected, I will convert it, which does the upload. And now I'm able to download the file that got manipulated. Now you know how to create a complete Azure function solution and add it to your online portfolio website. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. I answer every comment to help as many people as I can. If this video was helpful, please like it and subscribe to this channel if you want to see more content like this. And as always, thank you so much and I'll see you in the next one.